Now, Frank Sinatra had a few regrets, and Edith Piaf had none at all. But I've got one really big regret. I do wish I'd chosen a larger water tank when I designed my garden. But I've learned to make the most of my 21,000 litres. I have to be cruel to be kind. I water my fruit trees and my vegetables on alternate days. During hot weather or during drought, my vegetables will wilt on the days when they go without water. Now, this wilting isn't all bad. It indicates that the plants are toughening up and you can change them physically and their response to moisture stress if you do this as a routine. Other things like pests and diseases, root rot fungi and nematodes, they really love consistently moist soil. By allowing that to dry out in between waterings, I'm not doing them any favours at all. And in my garden, that allows me to get full value from a very small amount of water. I get tough crops, they may not look great, but I get a good crop and I deal with pests and diseases all in one go. Mulch is vital for cooling the soil and conserving moisture, but you can go too far. If I mulch thickly, five centimetres is the limit. Often I'll use less. And the reason is, if we get light showers of rain, I want that to penetrate through the mulch into the soil. With mulch, less is more. Drying winds can really restrict your success gardening in hot weather. And these sugarcane bales, well, they make a good support for my mouse melon, but the reason they're here is they are a barrier against drying winds. And by doing that, I'm using a third of the water that I would normally use if the beds were open and exposed to the wind. Plus, these provide a useful support. I can put poles across, lay shade cloth across the poles, and that way I've got a beautiful shade house if I've got seedlings germinating. There's one other benefit. Blue tongue lizards love living in the bales, so I've got a form of homegrown slug and snail control all rolled into water conservation. Another way I prevent wind damage is to reduce the size of some plants by pruning. Lower wind resistance means there's less risk of the tree being damaged by gales. Fewer leaves also means less water lost through transpiration. Keeping down the height of fruit trees also makes harvesting easier and safer. Summer days are salad days, and the first salad vegetable that springs to mind is the humble lettuce. But you won't find lettuce growing here, certainly not in summer. If it's wet, they rot. If it's dry, they're thirsty and they go straight to seed. What you will find growing here are things like warrigal greens, a local native, and it's been self-seeding in my garden for 10 years. Steamed, it's great in a salad. Also growing in my garden is purslane, another local weed. With a little bit of water, it produces a delicious, juicy vegetable. And growing all the way along here is one of my favourites, wall rocket. It likes a warm, freely draining position and it doesn't mind a little bit of drought. But there's one other strategy which I have, and that is a long-term view. Way back in 2003, climate modelling suggested that by 2050, Brisbane's climate would more closely resemble that of Townsville. So when I was putting this garden together, I looked north to things that thrive in Townsville. My pandanus cookii has never looked back. And this Queensland bottle tree, well, it's a strapping 10-year-old seedling. And nothing in this garden gets more than six waterings when it's planted, and then it depends on natural rainfall, whatever that is. I think they're doing really well and I think they'll continue to cope. So lastly, if the weather is hot, sunny and dry, turn those conditions around to your advantage. If those conditions make establishing seedlings difficult, the same conditions make ripening seed really easy. So what I've done is I've chosen my best plants as mother stock for a seed crop. I've got wazontle, coriander, chili, mustard and daigai choy ready to go. So instead of a conventional edible crop, I'll have a seed crop. So there you go. 
do your prep and turn summer gardening into a joy.